So let me talk a little bit about what I mean by parallel computing. And to do that, I have to give you a couple definitions. First definition is concurrency. And any of you who have a computer science degree, you already know about concurrency because you learned about it in your operating systems course. Concurrency is a property of a system when multiple things can be happening at the same time. They may not be happening at the same time, but at least they can. You have multiple things active and able to make progress at the same time. Parallelism is a subset of concurrency. In parallelism, what we say is you're taking some of that concurrency and you're actually executing it at the same time. So in this little picture right here, you can see I have concurrent, but nothing's happening in parallel. All right, I'm swapping between multiple active agents and they're all doing their little blocks, but nothing's happening at the same time. In the second little piece of this diagram though, we have concurrent, but parallel. This stuff is happening at the same time. So this is an important concept to keep in mind where you need to expose the concurrency in a problem and then map it onto processing units so they actually execute at the same time. That's parallelism. What that means is, is you have a universe of all programs that are out there, then you have a subset of them that are concurrent programs, programs that contain some amount of concurrency, and then you even have a subset of those which are concurrent programs that you've modified to make parallel programs. And so that's what I mean when I say parallel programs. Now, your head's swimming because I've given you all these words and I apologize for that, but I have just a wee little bit more I have to go through, all right? Sometimes we talk about an application that is a concurrent application. A concurrent application has concurrency built into the problem definition. Think of a web server. Does it even make sense to design and build a web server that can only take a serial sequence of inputs? That would be nuts. So that's an example of a concurrent application that's designed to be concurrent from the beginning. Now, there's another instance of something we call a parallel application. A parallel application, there are things happening at the same time to make it run faster or to make it run in the same amount of time but handle a bigger problem. Here's how I like to think about it. In the concurrent application, there is no way to even define the problem without concurrency. In a parallel application, though, you could talk about doing it without concurrency. I can talk about solving a linear system of equations on, on one processing unit. That's available to me. Or I can parallelize it to make it run faster. So why do I go through all of these definitions? And I do this because I really want you to understand how parallelism fits in with concurrency and for you to appreciate that I'm going to be talking about parallelism, parallel programming, how to make a problem run faster, how to get more work done in less time. I'm not going to be focusing so much on concurrent applications. I'm going to be focusing on parallel applications, and that's what OpenMP was designed for. So here's my standard little cartoon that I use to understand what you do when you write a parallel program. So I have this green blob with this little blue strip at the bottom, which represents a block of work and some data I need to keep track of in order to work with that. What I need to do is I need to find the concurrency in my program. And this is the sort of thing that we have never been able to automate. You have to look at your code, you have to think about your problem, and decide where is the concurrency. So what you end up with is little strips. So I've broken down my big rectangle into little tiny strips that uh, can each be done concurrently. And in doing that, sometimes I add a little bit more data I need to keep track of. Then what I do, after I've identified the concurrency, I need to organize it into an algorithm. I need to figure out what's the parallelism, how am I going to exploit it, how am I going to map it onto big blocks that can execute in parallel. So that's my algorithm strategy, and we will talk about the key algorithm strategies you're going to use in OpenMP. Finally, when all of that's done, then and only then do I dive into what parallel programming language am I going to use. So you can see the actual language you use, whether it's OpenMP, TBB, Silk, MPI, any of the many, many parallel languages out there, that's just the, the trivial last step at the end. All the really hard mental work occurs with finding the concurrency and understanding the algorithm strategy. So OpenMP is a language for that last step of taking your algorithm and expressing it in source code that you can run on a parallel computer. It's a set of compiler directives and a little bit of runtime library support so that you can run things in parallel. It makes writing C, C++, and Fortran programs about as easy as we can make it. So it's about application programming and making it as easy as possible.
So the basic construction of OpenMP is at the low level, you have shared address space hardware. It assumes the hardware gives you a shared address space. And I'll have a lot more to say about that later. Then you have on top of it, some operating system or runtime system that's gonna support the management of units of execution, or let's just say threads, because we're talking about multi-threading here, that is gonna support a multi-threading approach to accessing and working with that hardware. Then you'll have an OpenMP runtime that sits on top of that. Now we get to the programming layer, and this is what we'll actually be teaching you in this series of lectures here. So there's the directives that you're gonna use, which guide the compiler and what you want it to do. There's the library, which is the runtime library routines that do stuff that can only happen at runtime. And then there's a set of environment variables. And on top of that sit the application and the end user. So this is the basic construction of OpenMP that you're gonna work with and that we're gonna cover in detail. So the core syntax of OpenMP in C is you have a pragma, it's gonna be pragma OMP and then the construct name. So pragma OMP parallel and then there'll be some clauses that modify that. And then at the top, you're gonna to have to have an include file for data types, function prototypes. So that's gonna be pound include omp.h. And then most of the OpenMP constructs apply to a block that we call a structured block. Now I could go on and on about a structured block, but I won't. Look, all it says is this. You have a block of code, you enter one point at the top or one point at the bottom. You can't jump into the middle, you can't jump out of the middle. And it's just, it's just a simplification the compiler can use to keep things straight. So, simple pragma syntax, simple structured block that it applies to, that's how OpenMP looks. Next, we're gonna be looking at um, how to actually work with OpenMP and actually do things with OpenMP. We're actually gonna start working and writing code.